Good morning, everyone. What a glorious day. This is perfect. Hey, this is, these are the days you want when you're out flying and you've got a plane. You just want to, you're willing for these days uh, to, um, to come when you can't get them. It's just rainy or it's windy. But this is as perfect as it gets. I've got no breeze at the moment. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you can see the windsock there is just hanging. So there's no breeze. Not a cloud in the sky, absolutely stunning day, perfect day to fly. So at the field today I've got my Phantom FX61. This has just had um, iNav5 installed on it, so I'm pretty keen to give this a go. It's um, a pre-released pre version of iNav5, so this um, craft anyway wasn't running iNav4, so it's been a while since I've flown it, so I thought, well, why put iNav4.1 on it when I might as well just put the pre-released iNav5 on it and just um, see how it is. So the plan with this will be to to get it up in the air. Once it's in the air, I want to give it an, an auto-tune again, just to get everything good. And... Um, yeah, we might just see what sort of flight times it gets as well and compare it to my ZOHD Dart XL, which I flew uh, last week here. Um, I'm also quite keen to try this. I've made a mount for my um, for my screen here. I've got an e... Uh, this is a um, an Esheen EV800D FPV goggles that you can get. They're fairly cheap from Banggood. Um, the good thing with them, they, fall, they pull apart. Um, I'll have a video on this and this link uh, where I, I bought this from. I also got that from, from Banggood too, the connection for this. But that's a good um, option for an unused pair of FPV goggles. Um, show, you, uh, show you your um, video telemetry on screen while you're flying. A little bit heavy, but, well, I can't ask for everything. I'm going to be running my ZOHD um 10,000 milliamp so okay let's get it in the air and get some satellites going and have fun so this plane's got a uh a um, run cam split that will record some high definition footage for you hopefully i can also get some telemetry footage from the the goggles our starting position here and um, we'll do an auto launch um. okay so the auto launch on this craft usually works pretty well with a 10 inch prop on it Sensor lost. but the problem um, I had during this flight here was uh, I didn't realize that I had two order, uh, two angle modes set on my transmitter normally my transmitter is set up as angle mode on the top on the first switch then I can flick it down one to acro mode and then down another to manual mode if there's any ever any issues I can revert to manual mode um, what happened here was to do the auto tune as you can see, the craft is flying quite well in iNav5, just a stock standard firmware, um, and it's running angle mode right at the moment. It's very smooth, it was quite a good, so I was quite happy with it. The artificial horizon is still very slow for some reason, um, which did improve again auto with the, the auto tune. Now this is where I should have picked up here, I, I've stick it, stuck it into auto-tune now and I also switched it down another level to go to acro mode and because I was too busy focused on the auto-tune I never realised that I'm still in angle mode. Telemetry lost. And Telemetry this is what recovered. really happens guys if you uh, try and auto-tune in angle mode. That's why they say auto-tune must be done in acro mode not angle mode. So anyone that wants to know what happens, this is what happens. Um, can be with very disastrous results because the craft just became basically unflyable. 
It was about here I started to realise the plane was feeling like it wasn't improving, it was getting worse. Um, and it got to the point where I just, I couldn't return it. Uh, below me is sugarcane, it's 12 foot at least high, so if I landed in there, there is no way I'm getting the craft back. So at this stage my main goal was just to get it back to the field. I, my, I had it out of, I took it out of auto tune after about three minutes and the craft seemed to want to just keep banging to the right even with full left. Fuck. Um, I really thought I was going to lose it here. So my main goal was to get it over the tree line which is to my left here and then just try and ditch it. That was about all I could think of. The artificial horizon is way off. You can see how bad it's getting. I still never realized I was in only in angle mode and I should have seen it on my goggles. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, it just makes you, you just got to pay attention basically and listen to your setup carefully and just try and stay focused. As you can see, I'm getting further away from the field here at this point. This is where I thought I was going to lose it because I'm trying to bring it back here over that tree line and that's past the, the sugar cane and then my plan was just to drop the throttle and hopefully just crash it to the ground but it turned by itself to the left so all I could do was really power on the throttle and try and get a bit more altitude again to drift it back towards me I really didn't think I was going to get this craft back it was a real arm wrestle bringing it back here if I had known about acro mode, I could have flicked my switch one more and it would have got me back. So here I'm finally getting it back, so I've cut the throttle and uh, my main focus is to get it down in one per well, you can get it down anyway. You lose it, you lose everything, you crash it, you can repair it, and there it goes into the ground. So yeah, unfortunate, that's what happens if you try and auto-tune in Disarm. angle mode. Don't do it guys, and try and, try and be aware of what your, um, what your settings are. Don't go to sleep. So now we'll just go back to the video of what how I reacted and, and um, yeah, back to the live stuff. I'm not sure what's going on there because this, this craft flew beautifully last time I flew it. The only change is I now five. And the new firmware. But I was struggling to bring it back. And I was lucky to get it back to where I did. So I didn't, didn't end up losing the craft. I'm just glad I got it back. At one stage I thought it was going, it was right over in that direction over there. It's all sugar cane, it's very long. If it had have landed over there, Absolutely no chance I would have been able to find it. So yeah, thank you for that. It's not too much damage. All right, so I'm back home. Um, I think I've worked out what the problem was, and it was my fault. I'm trying to tune. Guys, if you're gonna set your Set your transmitter up, listen to it. We took off and it, it took off nicely. And then I put it into loiter mode and loiter was fine too while I set myself up for the auto tune. I went to go to acro, right? Before I did that, I went to go to acro. Angle. And it's still angle. I didn't realize I've got angle, angle up, angle. angle on the second side of the switch. And then acro, which is where I would have been right. Angle. So what I did, I gave it one flick, thinking I had angle, acro, and then manual. Instead, I've got angle, angle, acro. Angle. Listen to your transmitter, guys. Basically, I would have heard it. I should have heard it, but I didn't take any notice of it. So I'm trying to tune it um, Auto while it's in angle mode. And that was the reason why... I couldn't bring it back because it's tuning itself and I think it's making it worse because I'm in angle mode because I'm tuning. Um, 
very lucky to get it back really guys if i had have just flicked it into acro one more flick of that switch it would have been a totally different flight i think anyway that's the only thing i can think of why it did what it did i'm tuning it in angle mode not in acro mode unfortunately angle. so i'm going to fix that on the transmitter i'm going to go angle acro manual angle i'm not sure why i've got two angle modes bad mistake right so a few things to fix i've got to fix this that's just hot i'm just going to hot glue that on and um, we've got to take this wing apart and just get everything sorted out on there again and the same with this wing as well and the damage isn't bad There's a little bit more damage on this side, but I think my best bet is just to stick the whole thing in, just hot glue it all together. Okay, so now back at the field again. Um, I never recorded anything else here, so this is um, just an overdub. So we're trying again with the switch all set up properly now. I've double checked, triple checked everything now, and I'll make sure I listen for my acro mode warning or acro mode signal. So beautiful takeoff again, and it's very smooth, like it was in the first video, nice and smooth in angle mode. Um, it's actually in altitude hold at, right at the moment. No, sorry, it's in acro mode. I've stuck it into acro mode straight away. And you can see how smooth it is without even an auto tune. It's it's quite nice in uh, iNav 5. This is the um, the first version they released. I believe they've got uh, number two out now before the official release. Or it might be number three even out. But the official release is coming out in the next within the next month apparently. Okay, so now that I've got my bearings, I'm sort of feeling a little bit more confident that this isn't going to do the same thing again. I'm in acro mode. I've got manual mode prepared just in case this time. And um, we'll, we'll do our auto tune and, and see how it goes. I'm um, just looking at the, uh, the, at the artificial horizon again. It's better, I think, than what it was. It's still not great though. I'm not sure whether it's meant to be that way when you, before you do an auto tune and it improves, but yeah, it's, um, I'd love to know. I've even adjusted the, I've even adjusted the, uh, the horizon in the CLI as well, just to bring it up a little bit, but it just drifts, see? So the auto tune now starting, now we'll just do this one briefly for you, so you don't have to sit through it. You can see the artificial horizon is still wandering. That had me a bit worried. And the left and right shake was a bit wobbly there too, which wasn't real, I was a bit concerned about. Right, this is further into the flight. You can see the, uh, the artificial horizon has now pretty much locked onto the horizon. It's a lot better. And I've completed the auto tune. Um, and the craft is smooth. It, it didn't really alter too much from the stock settings to be honest. I didn't really... I gave it maybe five minutes on the auto-tune going left and right and pitching up and down. But I didn't want to really push it. It's, it. It is flying quite well. It was quite nice and smooth. 
Um, this is I just stuck it into return to home here just to test that. This is after a fair bit of flying. This whole flight you're watching here went for about 20 minutes. It's all been cut down. But this is the return to home. I wanted to check that just to make sure that the um, what was funny what was uh, a strange artificial horizon isn't going to affect the return to home. But the artificial horizon seems to have um, fixed itself now. So if anyone knows about that, I'd like to like to re, I'd like to confirm whether during an auto tune your artificial horizon does that. Uh, but now that I'm back in back in return to home or back in Angle or Acro, um, it's a lot better now. Very happy with this plane. It's a beautiful craft to fly. It always has been. The only issue I had was just previously there where it was my own mistake not listening to my transmitter and looking clearly at my modes that I was in through my goggles so we'll do another loop around and um, bring it in for, for a landing like I said I didn't want to push this one my plan originally was to do a quick auto tune and then Give it a bit of a range test at the same time, and just I've had a, had a lot more confident with this confidence with this plane, um, but lost it after that first flight. So I just had to get my confidence back with it, which I have now. It's, it's flying lovely. It takes off very well. It's returned to home works. It's loiter works. I even tested the altitude hold and cruise mode and they both work quite well. I didn't didn't add this to the video though. Yeah, it's a good job they've done iNav um, iNav 5. I'm very impressed with when the official release comes to uh, jump on it guys, it's it's good. So we'll bring it round now and we'll come in for a landing. And I hope you enjoyed the video. That was my little ups and downs. But in the end, iNav 5 is awesome. iNav is awesome in general. Thanks guys. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.